Severe storms have impacted portions of the valley. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Krista Bame. Our Valley News Live storm team has been out tracking the developments. This video coming from Colum, North Dakota. To find out when they're hitting areas of Grand Forks and Fargo, meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli joins us right away tonight with that. Justin? And thank you, Krista, and good evening, everybody. So we're tracking a line of storms. It has a massive coverage area from just south of Langdon all the way down toward the South Dakota border. Now, uh, we uh, saw some severe weather into the Stutzman County, Jamestown area with wind gusts and hail, large hail out that way. And we are getting reports of three or more inches of rain in some of the areas. Now, zooming in to the northern portion of this storm, some of the strongest uh, uh, portions of the storm we are seeing now entering uh, western Grand Forks County right now and it'll be uh, about an hour or so or maybe a little more before it gets into the Grand Forks area and making our way south we are seeing some strong uh, some heavy rain and possibly some wind and some hail into the Valley City area and it stretches back toward Lemoore and Dickey County. Uh, Lemoore is next on the uh, on the list of where these storms are going to hit and Ellendale is just south of them. They might actually miss some of the heaviest and steadiest rain. Now we'll uh, continue to track these storms and tell you uh, when they will be uh, in your area coming up a little later on in the newscast. Krista. All right. Thank you, Justin. And you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow that radar live. Just search VNL weather in the app store. One year ago, a pastor and his family packed a U-Haul, moved to Fargo, and started giving second chances. Redemption Road Ministries saw a huge number of men struggling with addiction who had nowhere to turn. It began with one halfway house here in Fargo. Today, they have seven and are planning for more. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us what some are calling the missing piece. These are real people with real issues. On a street in North Fargo, a few of these homes are owned by Pastor David Vernoy. There was two vacant properties on this block. Homes where men like Brian Egan come to live. He called me up out of the blue and said, uh, I'll come get you. After he finished treatment for alcohol. And so I've been here for five months and it's turned my life around tremendously. We really got incarceration down really good and we really got treatment down really good. Um, one of the pieces that are missing is, I think, the transitional process. Pastor Vernoy began with this house, giving men boundaries, expectations, and a fighting chance to transition back into the community. I myself am a recovering drug addict, and I was skid row. I was, um, if you saw me walking down the street, you knew exactly what I was. You, you could see that I was a drug addict. If recovering addicts don't get this type of opportunity, he says they often go back to what they know. Sean actually did the floor here. The very first resident was Sean Hansen, who recently passed away from an overdose. You know, in the recovery program, we have this saying that some of us need to die so others can live. And I used to say that, but I didn't have any life experience. And then once that life experience hit me, I really understood. Pastor Vernoy began this journey after his own mother died from a heroin overdose. The landlord actually... Uh, Addiction is a problem, he says, houses. is not going to go away. But this... Here we go. You ready to go inside? This is a start. Um, if an addict like me can do this, I know anyone can do it because I was bad. <laughs> Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. August 6th will be the one-year anniversary of Redemption Road Ministries. The pastor says everyone is welcome to their celebration that day. Also, they run off of personal donations. If you want to help or know someone who needs help, we have that information on our website. Just go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. If you haven't been impacted in some way by the area's ongoing drug problems, wait a short while. Chances are you will. Police departments are keeping tabs on the number of drug-related deaths. Those in the know say far more go unreported. While the war on drugs continues, another challenge is growing in maintaining the number of licensed addiction counselors in North Dakota. Um, in the state of North Dakota, you know, services have been so depleted that judges will send people to prison so they can get treatment. But I think the state ought to have a, a scholarship program of sorts where 
uh, people like myself, if I decide to go to school uh, to become a licensed addiction counselor, and other counselors too, and social workers, there's a dire need for counselors of every type. Monday on Valley News Live 10 at 10, join Mike Morkin as he looks into the addiction counselor shortage and what appears to be standing in the way of attracting replacements. Three juveniles are hurt, one airlifted to a hospital with severe head trauma after their ATV rolled near Eulen, Minnesota. It happened around 3.30 this afternoon, two miles north and five miles east of Eulen on Highway 32. Crews say three juveniles were on a Ranger when it rolled multiple times. Two of them were thrown off, and the Ranger landed on top of the third juvenile when it rolled. A second ATV ridden by a fourth person riding next to them called for help. One of them was airlifted to a hospital with head trauma, while two were taken by ambulance with internal bleeding injuries. One woman was injured after allegedly stealing a UND police cruiser in Grand Forks and crashing it near Crookston this morning. She's been identified as 23-year-old Cassandra Ellis from Columbia, Missouri. She was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. Ellis was not being pursued at the time of the crash, and it now appears alcohol played a factor. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has exclusive video and details regarding what led to the crash. It happened at 9.30 Sunday morning. The force of the crash completely destroyed the UND police Ford Interceptor. In fact, the force of the crash was enough to rip the entire engine from the vehicle. The driver was conscious as she was loaded into a waiting ambulance and taken to the hospital. Witnesses say she was traveling eastbound on Highway 2 at around 80 miles per hour when she went into the ditch near UMC and hit a crossroad. The vehicle flew into the air and rolled end over end for 70 yards. Almost hit my front end of the truck and then well, I saw I lost her control into the curb and just hit that hill and just flipped over. And then all of a sudden I seen him go in up in the air and then went end over end. Okay. From you know the back end to the front end until you land it there. UND police say this whole incident started at 842 Sunday morning in Grand Forks. Officers were called to the Hamlin Square apartments near the new medical school for a report of an intoxicated woman wandering around the area. Uh, they were unable to locate her at this time and they'd come outside and learned that one of the squad vehicles or patrol vehicles had been stolen. Okay. Um, so is it kind of believe that intoxicated woman took the vehicle? Yeah, that's what we would believe at this time. Weigel says it's still under investigation as to how the suspect was able to get into one of their squad cars and drive away. From Crookston, Minnesota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Charges against Cassandra Ellis are expected to be filed on Monday. Sergeant Weigel says she is not a UND student. A small protest that was advertised as a peaceful demonstration by a local Somali activist group turned into a confrontation outside the Valley News Live studios today. Protesters confronted a Valley News Live photographer as she attempted to shoot video of the event. Fargo police removed the protesters from the KVLY property. The group demonstrated because they said they were upset over reporter Bradford Eric's story on the risk of latent tuberculosis in local refugee communities. Our story presented data and facts from the CDC, state of Minnesota, and state of North Dakota on the number of latent TB cases in the refugee population. The state of Minnesota says 22% of refugees in that state carry latent TB while only active TB cases bars someone from entering the country. The Fargo Forum newspaper criticized Valley News Live's reporting as blatantly false. Forum Communications owns our competitors, WDAY and WDAZ. The newspaper also interviewed Cass County Health Department's Dr. John Baird. Baird told the forum that TB is, quote, not a major problem in the area, but later admitted that Cass County Health is treating active TB cases in the community. Over the weekend, nationally renowned Dr. Jane Orient, who is the executive director of the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons, blasted local and federal health officials for policies that allow refugees with latent TB infections to be admitted to the U.S. Orient said, quote, admitting people who might cause an epidemic makes no sense whatsoever from a public health standpoint. 
She went on to say officials who place politics above the health of Americans need to be held accountable and removed from positions of authority. Valley News Live stands by the story, and we plan to continue looking into the issues surrounding refugee resettlement in North Dakota and Minnesota. An apartment building suffered moderate damage after a fire this morning in Bemidji. The Bemidji Fire Department responded around 9.50 a.m. in the 600 block of Patriot Drive Northwest. They arrived to find a fire on the outside of the building that was spreading to the attack. The fire was contained and extinguished with only moderate damage. Damages are more than $50,000. The cause is under investigation, but it does appear to be accidental. A man was taken to a hospital in Minot where he told workers that he was attacked by a bear last night. Police say the 21-year-old man and a 23-year-old man broke into Roosevelt Zoo while walking around zoo grounds. The 21-year-old noticed the bear enclosure and stuck his arm inside of it. The bear bit his right hand. Law enforcement says the two men had been drinking alcohol. The, both of them are facing charges of criminal trespass.